Stitches, I'm here with my whip update for November but before I get into the little bits and pieces that I've got to show you I just wanted to say a big thank you to all of you who keep subscribing to my channel and watch my videos I seem to have had a lot of new subscribers lately so big thank you to you but also to all of you subscribers who've been with me right from the very beginning right from the time I made my first video I really appreciate everybody's um, comments, the lovely messages you send me and I really love it when people comment that they've decided to try something new just because of something they've seen in one of my videos. So I just wanted to put that out there first and say thank you to all of you who carry on watching my videos. So this month, um, I haven't got a vast amount to show you. I say that, um, I think it's partly because to me it doesn't feel like I've done a lot of stitching because basically for the past few months I've sort of gone back to being a one at a time stitcher where I've carried on working on a project until it's finished so consequently instead of having the four or five pieces I had to show you you know in the, the first few of my whip videos it's sort of gone back to one or two pieces a month but that will all change next year so you may remember back in my October whip video I said that I hadn't actually stitched for two weeks after I finished my um, Heaven and Earth design um, mini uh, watching it fly I didn't stitch for two weeks, I just did some finishing and played with my threads and stuff like that. So I wanted to get back into stitching something, so I wanted to find something small that I could stitch up in an evening or two just to get me back into the flow of it. So I thought what I would do actually is to pick out Hardanger project because I had some lovely new Hardanger threads, pearl threads, come in the post from Jojo Designs, so I kind of felt obligated to Michelle really to use them because I was the one that sort of requested that she dyed them for me. <laughs> so I thought I would do that. So um, yeah, I was really excited. I messaged um, Michelle a few months ago. I was looking through my Jojo threads, my cottons, and I thought these threads are such beautiful colours. They would look really good in hardanger designs. Ones that I've got in my stash, ones that I was planning to do um, for next year for Operation Threadporn. So I messaged Michelle and I said, "Have you? I know it's a bit of a niche market, dyeing, hand dyeing, you know, cotton pearl. But is it something you would ever consider doing?" And Michelle said, "Well, yeah, it is sort of niche, but she said I do a bit of hard hanging now and then. So what I'll do, I'll just order um, some skeins from her suppliers of, you know, white DMC uh, pearl threads from her suppliers, dye them up and see how they take the dye and that type of thing, and let you know." So that's what she did, and that's why there you can now get every Jodry thread that's in the regular range, cotton range, you can actually request Michelle um, to dye some for you in pearl, which is, I was so, so excited when Michelle did that because it's really hard to find hard anger threads, the same colour in number five and number eight and number 12. Um, if you stitch hard anger, you already know this, but if you don't, normally you use hardanger the pearl threads in pairs so depending on the count of your fabric you'll use a number five and number eight together or you'll use a number eight and number twelve and it's quite hard to find number twelve hand dyed pearls so it kind of sometimes it limits the colours you can use and things there's not I can't think of any other company that dyes five eight and twelve in beautiful hand dyed you know colours you actually want to stitch in across their range I think Michelle was one of the only ones to do it and it's so awesome because as much as I love Karen and Wildflowers and Watercolours, they are expensive, more expensive, but they only come in 5 and 8, you can't get um, the same colour dyed in a number 12 pearl. But anyway, so that's, I was so excited when she did that and, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful that she chose to take a chance on dyeing some pearls. So, obviously I had to buy some. And the great thing is that obviously Michelle, being the awesome stitcher that she is, and she stitches hard and so she knows you use the thread in pairs is that you can buy single skeins of any of the um, weights 5, 8 and 12 there's a slight discount when you buy them in pairs and more of a discount when you buy a full set so if you buy one colour in a number 5, a number 8 and number 12 they cost £6 for three skeins of thread which is a complete bargain if you know anything about hand dyed pearls and how expensive they can be you know that's just really awesome. So the colours that I chose, one of them is really obvious, you all know what colour I chose, so I'll leave that one to last. So I asked Michelle to dye me um, 
a set of pearls in um, Alaskan Beauty. I've had these for a few months now, but I haven't shown you any of my stash for a while, so I thought I'd just show you some threads because that's always good to do. Uh, so that was Alaskan Beauty. This one is Tropical Bay. So a full set of pearls, 5, 8, and 12 in Tropical Bay. And get them out. And this one is a sun, a sun, the sunshine state. I can't say it. Really bright colours. I mean, you can't, you can't get pearls like that anywhere else. All three in those beautiful colours. And lastly, um, over the rainbow. Oops. So again, the same. Five, eight, and twelve. So that was brilliant. So obviously. I wanted to find a little hard angle design that I could stitch up quite quickly and just get a feel for the pearls and how the the variation of the colours turns out and everything. So I found in my stash a little small hard angle freebie design, which was a freebie to all the members of the Stitch Specialists um, Yahoo group that signed up for a stitch along that Abby was doing a couple of years ago now called um, Confetti for Hard Anger, which is actually a design that I plan on stitching um, next year. I really want to get back into doing a hard anger and sort of challenging myself a bit more in my stitching. So this was just a little freebie design, I thought it was ideal to try out um, these pearl threads. So obviously the colour that I chose to stitch this in was my favourite Jojo Design thread, which is um, Peacock Feathers. And this is what the pearls look like. So for this one, because I was stitching it on 25 count um, Lugana, I used a number 5 and number 8 pearl, so that's why they're slightly thinner. And then that's a number 12 pearl, which I haven't used yet. Incidentally, um, I've said it before, but pearl threads, you can use them not necessarily just for hard hanger. You know, using the number eight, you could use the number eight or the number twelve in ordinary cross stitching. Just use it, a single strand of it to cross stitch with. And actually, when you're using a variegated thread, it's a lot easier to get the continuity because obviously it's a single thread. So every time you cut a length, you know exactly where to start the next length with on your stitching. Whereas sometimes it can be a bit of a bind when you're using stranded variegated thread because obviously you cut off the length of thread and if you're using two strands then in that length of thread you've got you know three um, three lots of two strands so three lengths of usable thread that you're using in your stitching if you're stitching with two strands and then you've got to obviously cut off another length and match it up whereas when you're using a single strand of a variegated colour it's a lot easier and obviously the coverage um, if you use a number eight pearl to do your cross stitching the coverage is basically the same as using two strands of DMC really so you know don't think that pearl threads are just for hard iron they're not you can use them in ordinary stitching so yes I used my peacock feathers and I used it to stitch up um, this little piece of hard hanger here. If I put it there, you can. It doesn't show up there. There you go, that's a bit better. You can see the filling stitch in the middle. Yeah, so that's um, peacock feathers. So I used a number eight pearl. No, did I use number five pearl for the buttonhole stitch? I can't remember. Might just be the number five pearl I used actually, I think. Yes, yeah, it's just a number five pearl I used and peacock feathers for this one. So the buttonhole stitch around the edge and the um, um, satin stitches in peacock feathers. And there's also um, a solid purple I use and a number eight pearl for the filling stitch in the middle. That filling stitch in the middle is called, um, I don't know how to say it because I obviously can't speak Norwegian, but it's um, a struvor stitch filling stitch, S-T-R-U-V-O-R, -R, is how it's spelled, or some people call it a rosette stitch because basically that's what it looks like. So that was really fun to do and it was nice to practice um, my buttonhole stitch. So basically once you edge something, you probably know this, but once you edge something in the buttonhole stitch, you can actually cut around the fabric and it's, you know, won't unravel obviously. Um, buttonhole stitch, blanket stitch are similar, but they're used for different reasons really. Um, some people think they're the same but technically they're not. So that's a little coaster design really, not that I necessarily use it as that, although it would be quite easy I'm sure to back it with very thin felt and put it in one of those acrylic um, coaster things you get. Um, I know Mabel sells them on her website so it was just a nice quick stitch to do and it was really great to, I could clearly see the colour and how 
you know, how the variegation works in that thread and I really enjoyed just stitching that bit up. So that helped to get my stitchy bug back a bit and also, you know, I really enjoy doing hard anger, just doing something a bit different and hard anger does stitch up for a small design like that, it stitches up really quickly so that was only sort of a couple of evenings really stitching that one. So then the only other piece that I stitched on in November, as a lot of you know, follow me on Instagram, was my Northern Expressions Needlework Twisted Rainbow Sampler. So up until the beginning of November, this is how far, here's a picture of how far I would got stitching that one up. And this is what it looks like now. Now I know that this is not going to come out on the camera at all very well. Um, it's very hard to show this one because it's obviously very black it's black fabric with very bright silk so the camera doesn't really like it very much the iPad doesn't like it but I will endeavour to do my best to show you what it looks like so that's it all done in its entirety absolutely loved stitching this it's a real joy to stitch I know um, Denise is stitching this one as well at the moment but I used again um, just to recap for any new people um, 32 count Belfast linen with um, thread pickers silks, so Eileen silks in the rainbow colourway because there's two there's two um, packs that she's got. There's a rainbow pack and there's sparkling prism I think it's called, which is sort of more pastel tones. This is sort of bright. Um, again, Nicole's pattern, really absolutely fabulous to stitch from. If you're new to speciality stitches, it is a pattern that is completely. Um, doable for you, I can think of the right word then, achievable. Nicole provides excellent stitch diagrams, you know, you, you can't go wrong really. Obviously the difficulty level in this one was more to do with stitching on the black. Um, I didn't find it too bad, it was a lot easier when I was stitching it in August than it was stitching it in November. But after, you know, what I find once you get used to the fabric, the needle kind of finds the holes itself. Um, so yeah, I, I really really enjoyed stitching this one and I think it was kind of nice that I started 2014 stitching Nicole's Twisted Band Sampler and I kind of finished 2014 with the Twisted Rainbow Sampler so it's a nice bit of symmetry there so there it is again. I couldn't I could not recommend this enough I mean if you're one of those stitchers that are nervous about speciality stitches <clears throat> they're really with this pattern there really isn't any need to be not at all. It's it's a fabulous pattern, and I, yeah, I just really really love stitching it. So um, that was that. So um, I think I can't remember now. I meant to check what number finish that was. I think it's eighteen. So I've not done bad for two thousand fourteen. Eighteen finishes, including a heaven Earth design and a chatelaine. So not bad. Um, yeah. So that was all the stitching I did. So obviously I finished this one and did that little bit of hard anger, but that's been it really. Um, December is going to be a funny month because I don't actually have any stitching plans at all. Now that I've sort of done all my goals for the year, um, I'm thinking about next year, the things I want to stitch. And with Operation Threadborn, I've got some projects that I'm really excited about stitching next year. So I don't kind of want to start anything big now. Um, I don't want anything to carry on over into 2015. So basically this month I'm just going to be, you know, playing with some silks. There's some silks I want to sort of give a good test run with to see um, what sort of projects they'll be suitable for next year. But I don't have any great plans to stitch. So consequently, there won't be an update video from me in December showing any whips in December. Anything that I do stitch, I'll just put up on Instagram. It won't be anything big. I know yesterday I started um, a little freebie butterfly design on some 40 count linen because I wanted to see um, how that is to stitch on again so I can sort of incorporate it into Operation Threadborn next year. So yeah basically I'm just sort of playing around with my stash and thinking up ideas for next year basically so there won't be an update video for me in December so this is the last you'll see of me in 2014. Um, what else do I have to show you? Um, yes Two pieces of my needlework went on a little holiday to Israel to visit Rachel Bitten, otherwise known as um, Passy Floral on Facebook or Muppet's Mum on Etsy. And what she does is she will take your needlework, you send it to her, 
she'll take your needlework and she will stretch it and lace it on acid free mount board and then she will um, paint, hand paint a mount on that that um, enhances your needlework, takes element of your elements of your stitching onto the um, mount and then she sends it back to you and then obviously all you've got to do is find a frame so I sent her two pieces of my needlework, I was so excited to be able to do that I did sort of um and ah about it for a while because it's a big thing, well it's not a big thing but to send your needlework, you know to send my needlework off in the post in my own country would be bad enough but sending it overseas where it could get lost or whatever but I thought no, Rachel's work was so beautiful that it was worth taking the risk and to date she has not lost any work in the post for any of you people that are like me and worry about things like that so eventually it does reach her so the two pieces I chose, the first one was this one you might remember it was by Abby Gurdon and it is um, The Great Escape so I won't talk about the stitching but there's all sorts of specialty stitches and bits and pieces in there but this is what Rachel um, did with it, she double mounted it with the green, um, a green mount and a purple mount and then she hand painted the details on um, so she took sort of elements of the stitching and added it to the outside of the frame and I absolutely love it, I was so pleased um, when she showed me the pictures, I mean it, you can't really see, you know, just showing you on a video or even putting it up on Instagram, you can't really see the detail in it but it's such beautiful work and I would definitely recommend checking out her Facebook Facebook page you can see the other um, other frames um, other mounts that she's done for other stitches and it's just really beautiful it's actually um, for what she charges to do it um, it's not necessarily just for special pieces it depends on how much you love your needlework of course and how you want to display it but for the work that she does and the time it takes her to do it and you know, she sends it back um, I did kind of feel like I should have paid her more really but so that's that one so I just got to find a, find a frame for that one now and the second piece I sent her was one of my favourite pieces of needlework that I've done which was my uh, mini unleashed butterflies, my heaven and earth design that I stitched in HDF silks and when I've seen Rachel's work before she paints beautiful, hand paints beautiful butterflies and I just knew that of, of all the pieces I'd want to send to her, this would be um, the one really. So this again, this is the one I stitched in HDF silks, which is why it looks slightly different than it would have done if I stitched it in DMCs. But you've seen it all before anyway. But that's the mount um, that Rachel painted. So again, you can't really see um, the details very clearly, but it's just so beautiful, and it's got like a metallic silver inlay as well, just to. But I just really love it. I think it's um, this is one of my this piece of needlework, uh, this bit of stitching, is one of my top three favourites that I've ever stitched, and I just I really love it. So Rachel adding that bit, um, you know, well that bit is not a bit. It's beautiful what she's done. It's just made it more special. So I'm just so pleased with that. So I definitely um, recommend checking out Rachel's work. I never thought that I'd be able to have my work um, framed in a way that ha you know that has a hand painted mount um, for years I've um, admired before I knew of Rachel's work I admired um, Jill Rensel's work I don't know if any of you a lot of you are familiar with her work you, you may well be I don't know um, but I love seeing her work on her blog she's based in Utah so any of you um, stitches that are out that way or oh, I know actually there's been some pieces stitches in the UK that have sent her, her work, their work so that she can provide the mount, stretch it and provide the mount for it, not necessarily the frame. But her work is um, amazing as well. I think it really adds something to your stitching, especially if it's a special piece of stitching that means something to you, to have that extra sort of special touch added to it. So obviously I'll put a link below to, definitely to Rachel's um, Passive Florals Facebook page and her Etsy page. So if you're interested, you can have a look. And I'll also link to Jill Rensel's, Jill Rensel's blog in case you um, are unfamiliar with her work. And then you can see that extra <sighs> bit of glamour that you can add to your needlework when you have it framed if you feel so obliged. So that's that. And do I have any other pieces of needlework news for you? Um, yes, some sad news really because um, a lot of you know already that Bev at Love Thy Thread had to um, make the difficult decision to close down her website. 
I know that Mandy and Denise were taking part in the stitch along that Bev ran, uh, ran this year and lots of others of you have bought some of Bev's charts. So, but for health reasons, um, Bev decided that she'd, you know, she had to close, close her business down for the moment. I mean, who knows if her health improves, the situation might change. So that was sad because she had some really lovely um, artist work that she charted, which is a shame. But I think a lot of people took advantage of, I think she had a 40% sale running and took advantage to get the charts that they felt that they couldn't live without. So there's a potential for lots of new starts out there for stitches. Um, the other bit of that's sad news, not sad really, but it's just, just the way things go, is that finally um, Vicky at Hand Dyed Fibres has taken down all the silks from her website. Um, Vicky's been winding down her, floss, her silk floss business for the last two years. I think she announced back in the summer 2012 that she'd be discontinuing doing silk floss because that she just um, found that there wasn't a market for it so much anymore, unusually I think. But um, what she's, what she's done now, she's turned her attention to yarns and things like that, so that's where she's making her money. So that's a shame because HDF silks are fantastic, um, beautiful silks to stitch with, um, but you know, there's plenty of other silks out there, it's not like that's the only silk in the world, but you know, it's just a shame. Um, good needlework news, do I have any of that? Um, yes, I'll be joining in on a stitch along next year, again, um, with Esther at um, Produce Bressan. You might remember, those of you that have been watching my videos since the beginning, um, in January uh, this year I stitched um, a black work piece that was fleur de lis purple with and I used um, purple HDF silks to stitch it with. Well that designer, Esther, again is running another freebie stitch along next year and because I'm a complete francophile I have to stitch it. So it'll be a combination of black work and um, cross stitch. It's not a mystery stitch along, you can see what the design is going to look like. Um, there are two ways to join in if you wanted to. Um, either become a member of the, her Facebook group, um, Bridges Bressan's Facebook group. Again, I'll, post a, I'll put a link below in the description. Or if you're not on Facebook, it doesn't matter, you can still join in. Um, you can subscribe um, via her blog. And um, What I'll do, I'll link to her blog as well, so you can see all the details there of how you can join in on the stitch along if, you not, you know, if you're not a Facebook person which not everybody is. So I'll link to that below. Um, I haven't decided what fabric or thread I'm using yet. I might be super traditional and just use white and white uh, floss on a neutral background. I don't know yet. Or I could do white and red. I don't know. I haven't really thought that far, but I just know I want to stitch it. So I'll be joining in on that. And the other thing I just thought I'd mention briefly is um, a stitching blog, which um, I just wanted to let you all know about. I know I posted about it on um, Instagram. But Mel, who is a stitcher that I've been following on blogs for a long time, she used to blog under the name Goth Tigger, or you might have seen that name on the internet. Um, she's a fantastic stitcher and she really knows what she's talking about. And a few months ago, back in October I think, she set up, um, started a new blog called the Cross Stitch Blog website called the Cross Stitch Review. And I think the tagline that she uses is something like, um, I open the packet so you don't have to. And what she does every day, she, she has a post every day. Um, different days have different themes. But what she does intrinsically is reviews um, designers, does designer profiles and reviews their charts. Now a lot of people review charts, but it takes a stitcher, a real stitcher, to know the details that you really want to know about the chart. So for example, things like, how the symbols are printed, because I know it winds up a lot of stitches, myself included, when you get a chart and the symbols are a combination of letters and numbers rather than actual shapes and, and real symbols. Um, so sort of things like that, she, she reviews, you know, she tells you how many pages, how they print their charts, how clear it is, all that type of thing. And she also puts up um, lit pictures to um, the recommended materials to use. And she does a cost at the end of each project to say this is how much, you know, if you had to buy all the fabric and the floss from scratch, this is how much this design would cost a kit, all that type of thing. And she has links to all different suppliers. And I know this past sort of Black Friday weekend, she had a page running that was constantly updated of all the stitching sales that were taking place. Um, I know a lot of us took advantage of all the different deals that are out on Black Friday. Um, so I just thought I'd mention that blog. You can subscribe you know, quite easily and you can get the updates through Google, so as most of us 
obviously all of us watching this are on YouTube, we are connected to Google, so it's quite easy to do nowadays. But I just thought I'd recommend it because I found it a really brilliant blog, really interesting read. And the other good thing is on Fridays, the post for Fridays is a freebie Friday post where Mel features a designer or a blogger that has a lot of freebies on their blog. So that's always good as well. I know um, for the last few Fridays she's featured people's blogs that I've I've not heard of, so I've got a few new freebies. Um, I'm actually searching one at the moment to test out some silk threads. So I just thought I'd mention that, especially if you're new to stitching, sometimes you know it's useful to see what's out there and also to get some freebies under your belt to stitch and have a practice on. So again, I'll put a link to that in the description. So Mel has Cross Stitch Review website, but she also has a Facebook She's also on Facebook, so if you Google, Google, if you search Cross Stitch Review on Facebook, you'll find her. But I'll put all the links below for all of that. Anything else? Not really. Stash has been coming in as it does. I haven't really shown any of my stash for a few months, but I think a lot of you already realise that on Flickr, on my Flickr account, um, even before I started all this floss tube business. I always take um, pictures of the stash that I've acquired for that month and put it together in a sort of collage so that I can see what I've bought each month. So if you're ever interested in what I buy, because I won't necessarily show you, but I always link to my Flickr account in the description so you can find out that way what I've been spending my stash pennies on. So yeah, that's it basically. Not, not a vast amount of great interest or things to show. But I am stitching a bit here and there, so that's a good thing. So that is my last video for 2014. I am hoping this weekend to get up a very, 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 very short video. Probably my shortest ever YouTube video. Um, just basically as a, a sign up. It's not really a sign up. But just as a way for anybody taking part in the Mirabilia Stitch Along to let other stitchers know that they're taking part in the chart that they're doing. Because obviously... On the old, on the original video, Stitch Along video, there's, you know, all sorts of comments and all different things. So this video is just going to be very brief and just a list of, hopefully, a list of names of who's taking part and what they're stitching. So it's easy to look at, easy to find all those stitches that are taking part and follow them should you wish. Um, so that's everything I have to say, really. So again, thank you for bearing with me during these sparse winter months of my stitching. Um, hopefully next, I am, although I know I don't look like I am, I am actually really excited about next year's stitching and the whole Operation Thread Porn thing and um, getting to use all sorts of different materials and fibres and trying to, you know, broaden my stitching horizons. Obviously there'll be loads of new stitches that I'll, I want to learn and learning how to finish things in a better way um i've got some i've got some inspiration from instagram and some crafty type books that i've got out of the library so i'm hoping that i can perhaps incorporate all of those sort of elements into my stitching and finishing next year my sister is coming to stay with me for a few days so we are going to inventory all my floss i do have an inventory but it, i haven't updated it for a while so it'd be nice to go through and she'll also be very good at pulling out floss and coming up with ideas for things so that'll be a fun few days for her <laughs> um she'll bully me into making sure i use as much floss as i can next year i'm sure yep so that's that so all that's left to say is thank you for watching and happy stitching mm -hmm.